跟恁恁咱结束啊，恁在六届七届是恁来教会，这个叫做 transform 这个运动。Then the famous in Romans chapter twelve verse two. Then go back to Bible. So we all read this in chorus. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. It's good and pleasing and perfect will. 咱是讲人生七个真重要诶部分。讲讲咱诶属灵诶健康，咱诶身骨诶健康，咱诶理性诶健康，咱诶情绪诶健康，咱诶关系健康，咱诶经济健康，咁咱诶职业诶健康。顶礼拜咱讲到辛苦的健康，啊，这个属灵的健康。The Sunday we began the series with the spiritual health。灵性的健康只有一个办法。There's only one way to your spiritual health。就是亲近你的上帝。This is to grow near to your God。因为伊是咱的 Creator。Our God is our Creator。上帝创造人的时阵。When God created man。上帝唔不创造一个人有当离开上帝家己生存的人。God has never created a man that can survive by himself apart from Him. So we need God. And we all need God. When a man leaves God, there's a problem that will happen in his spiritual life. There's only one way. It is to draw near to our God. Closer to God. Draw closer to God. So that our spiritual life will mature and grow. Then we began by using the long story to explain. And last Sunday we began by the story of the prodigal son. In our life group, we began by talking about the spiritual habit. Similarly, in our life group. Booklet. There's the seven habits of a spiritual life. You need to set specific goals or objective for our spiritual life. If you have participated in the first section, if you will not set your goal, nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. So let you set your goal for your spiritual life. That's why you need to set the goals for your spiritual life. Can any quad daily aspect? And this Sunday we look at the second aspect. Physical health. Which is the physical health. 全世界人已经知呀。And the people of the world already know that. 那你身体健康。The physical, the health of our physical body. 甲你内面你的压力，你的 stress 有绝对性的关系。There's an absolute relationship with the stress. Or pressure that you face in your life. This is a public secret. It's an open secret. Everybody knows. Which everybody knows. Put some person at poor B. That eighty percent of your illness. Kabli is something you can have. Is related to the problem of your soul. Kabli up that you can have. Is directly related to your pressures. Kabli addressed you can have. And your stress. So you need to solve your own health problem. If you want to resolve your Health issue. You need first resolve the issue of your pressure. So, again, I tell you, Maxi, turn your pressure into your blessing. And that's why this morning's message is from stressed to be blessed. Because the pressure is good or is it bad? There's the good and bad side of stress. Pressure will make people grow. Stress or pressure will cause one to grow. If you have pressure, A person who will not face the pressure will live his life and live carelessly. Easy come, easy go. And they will come easy and go easy. This type of people will never grow and mature. However, the unbeneficial pressure. That only will cause your soul to suffer, but your physical health as well. So today's message, 真的是只要将无好压力变做上帝你的 blessing. And that's why this morning we want to know how to turn our stress to God's blessings. 我相信大家人知呀。I believe that everyone knows. 现今这个世界。In today's world, 人们对压力是拉来拉多。The pressure that we face is increasing. So the guys in stressful. And that's why everyone lives a stressful life. Why? We submit. We change the reason. There are so many reasons. Reason number one. The first reason. We tend to worry. Hengim, we tend to worry. 
We tend to worry more than before. And when you're small as a child, you don't face any problems or worries. You play, you are so happy. However, today's child, they face many problems. And they began their schooling three years old of age. I'm sorry to tell you, and many pressures are caused by their parents. As they send their children to school, three years old, and four years old, they will uh, enroll in the piano lessons. All parents want their child to excel. First honor, first honor academically. And on the art side, they need to play taekwondo or martial arts or ballet. I will not believe if your child is not pressured at all. You know, in the Japanese schools, and when they're in their elementary uh, period, uh, if they are three years or younger, they should not be subjected to tests. Grade three, grade three, grade three. They are not allowed to take any exams. There are no first, second, or third honors in their class. All of them are the same ranking. Today's children, as they compete against each other, it's all our fault. It's unnecessary. We want our children to enjoy their studies and not afraid of studying. In life, there are a lot of worries. The adults have their worries, the children have their worries. Number two, secondly, hurry. we tend to hurry. This world is getting faster and faster in pace. In your walk, you walk faster. If you walk slower, then people will get mad at you. If you stop for a traffic light, from red into green, as the traffic light turns from red to green, if you do not move your vehicle immediately, you shall hear the blaring sound of the horn of the car behind you. You're not aware why everyone is so in a hurry. If you're in a hurry, I will not believe if you're not tense at all. Number three, Thirdly, we live in a very crowded environment. 83% of today's population live in an urban environment where people get more and more. 1,800 years ago, there's only one city in the whole world with one million population. The London of England. In today's world, many people, many places that you'll go to will have millions of people living together. If you take an LRT, the passengers will be so close to each other that you will smell the aroma of the person beside you. We are so crowded. And traffic situation will cause you to be stressful. No wonder you are so stressful. Number four, fourthly, in our lives we face multiple choices. If you will have many choices, it means that you need to make a lot of decisions. You know, it's so stressful to be making decisions. Because not every decision you make will be correct. Do you believe that you'll be perfect in making your decisions? As a person who is responsible, when I make decision, whatever decision you make, I shall bear up the consequence. You should bear the consequence. Because of change your choices, there are so many choices. Up like a cat wall, and then you'll experience more pressure. Think about nineteen years ago. When we were still small as a child, I gave him coffee. If you would enjoy a cup of coffee, there's only one choice. There are only two choices. Number one, first, sure. He said the hot beverage or the cold beverage. No choice. No other choice. Only hot or cold. Today, if you enter a Starbucks or UCC, 
or a different coffee shop. You'll find several types of coffees available. After you make an order, the barista will ask you, do you want how many percent of sugar in your coffee? We need to make a lot of decisions. And then you'll experience more and more pressure. Privacy. And another thing is you lack privacy. Today's world. It's almost impossible for you to enjoy your quietness or solitude. Your mobile phone will be unceasingly battering. Some people they have more than one cell phones. Are you afraid that people could not locate you? And it got, it got worse with the event of Facebook. Everything you do will be made known to many people. Whenever you go to take a common meal, when the meal is served, you ask others to wait and take a snapshot of all the dishes and send them all to the Facebook. Is it necessary to let everyone know what dishes you enjoyed? I don't know why. You have this habit. Before you say grace, you take pictures of all the dishes. Served. Why do you want to let everything everyone knows about everything? Facebook. 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 The Chinese translation, two characters, face and a book. The Taiwanese have a different translation. Facebook. English is Facebook. Facebook. It's, it's inevitable that you'll face death. If you're in the Facebook, sooner or later you'll face death. You might smile at the joke, but there's some truth or reality in it. You should allow yourself some privacy. Do not expose everything about you. I'll be surprised if you're not stressed with Number that. Six, six, fear of the future. We all fear the future. We do not know what will happen to us in the future. And that's why you're a little bit tense. Many reasons will cause you to be stressful. Pressure. And physically, you'll not enjoy well-being. You ask yourself, is there a way yes, to resolve? Yes, yes, yes. Let's talk to Psalm 23. And this morning, we'll share with you a very popular and and famous psalm, Psalm 23. Many of us are familiar with this psalm. And through the verses, we'll be providing you with six different ways to solve this problem. Number one, first, if we can look to God to meet all our needs, then you'll realize that your stress or pressure will diminish or decrease. Psalm 23 verse 1. Let's begin by Psalm 23 verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Not a single person in the world will cause you to be fully satisfied. Only God can satisfy all our needs. You should never put your security or sense of security in any person, in any place, or in any object. Because all things will change. If you put your sense of security in your job or your vocation, one day, if you find yourself without a job, on the other hand, if you put your sense of security in your spouse, in your husband, or in your wife, I'm sorry. One day, if your husband will leave this world, if your wife will leave you, or if he will uh, depart from you, what will you do? 
Do not put your sense of security in your money or your financial wealth. One day, if you face bankruptcy, or your money devalued, how will you resolve it? Many things in the world will change. You should never put your sense of security in changing objects. There's only one place that will never change. Our God will never ever change. Our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. As we surrender our whole self in Him, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. Your not being in want does not only pertain to your material needs. Similarly, your spiritual life will not be in want. You know why? Because in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 32, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? If God will give His only Son to you, will He still hold back any good thing from you? God will give you everything you need. In, the, in this world, only God can satisfy all your needs, including, however, you need to look up to God. worship God. In Christian term, we call it worshiping God. If you want to find true satisfaction, look upon Him, worship Him. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15. This is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says, In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. But you would not have none of it. Why don't you want to receive them? If you want to have renewed strength in your heart, you need to turn back to God. Worship is the best way to resolve your worries. Whenever you feel you're worried, you have only an ex, 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 exit route. And it's to look for God. You worship Him. As you worship God. Then you'll find that your life will change. Apostle Paul has this experience. One time when he was beaten half dead. Midnight. The Bible says midnight. During the middle of the night. Paul rose up. What did he do? He worshipped God. And as he worshipped God, he found his environment changed. First, whenever you face worry, uh, worrisome objects, you need to look up to God and look for Him as your satisfaction. Number two, secondly, as we obey God's instructions about rest. If you read verse 2, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Man needs rest. And we have a lot of things to do. As if 24 hours each day is not enough for you. Even 36 hours will not be sufficient. Have you ever thought about that? When God created human, you ask, why did God not create a man that does not need a rest? Or, why, why did God not create a man which needed only two hours of race? Then this man will have 22 hours of work. Will it not be better? Why did God create a man that will need eight hours 
of rest each day. Almost one third of his time. One third of the man's lifetime. Will be spent lying in bed. Such a waste of time. Why did God create that way? For God knew that. The importance of rest. Even God rested. After he finished creating the world in six days' time, on the seventh day, God rested. It's called the Sabbath day. God rested. Of course, we all know that God does not need the rest. For the Bible says that God will never grow tired But God rested on our behalf. He set a very good example for us. Even God rested. And the more man should rest. God even instructed us to obey this law by providing us Ten Commandments. The fourth commandment, you should observe the Sabbath day and to show us how important rest is to us. Many people, they dislike rest. They want to keep on working, earning more money, uh, going over time. I'll be surprised if you are not stressed at all. I'll not be surprised if you do not face pressure. Let us not be deceived by the, by the evil one. What will you do with the much money that you earn? What will you do with the money placed inside the bank? Let me tell you. The money inside the bank does not belong to you. Do you believe this statement? Money inside the bank. Not you. If you will not withdraw it, the money does not belong to you. If you will not spend that money, it doesn't belong to you. Use it wisely. Use it in God's kingdom. So that you have money in, the, in His kingdom. May I share with you this testimony? I pray that this man's testimony will become a great reminder. Before you is a very famous personality of Harvard University. The president of Harvard University in the 90s. What kind of a person is Neil Rudenstein? There's a very unique and special part of this man's life. Listen. For three consecutive years. Every day, On the average, every day. fundraising every day one million US dollar. This man was able to raise on the average one million US dollar for Harvard University per day. Per day, then so sadly for consecutive three years of time. This is a record for this Octang fundraising four zero billion US dollar. And this man holds the record for raising four billion US dollars for Harvard University. Kasi lang kung si. You'll find it such a big amount. Every day one million na kasi lang ba? Averaging one million each day. This lang tin man day gal. And this man was so capable. He will work 12 hours each day. And then, then, everything under his approval. All matters pertaining to the university, from important to the menial, from big to small, will need his approval. Without his final decision, no one can move. Make the story short. To make the long story short. Then, even the type of toilet paper that you'll use in a comfort room needs his approval. This man was so successful. But after three years, there was one morning, this man overslept. You may find oversleeping a normal routine. Many people would oversleep, oversleep each day. Because we dislike waking up each morning. But this man is different. This man will wake up 6 a.m. each day and begin his work. However, one day, he found himself oversleeping. 
马个先修先咯。He said to himself, maybe I'm just too tired. 但是问题拉拉拉严重。However, each day his problem or the situation got worse. 原来伊有一个破壁。And he, he was discovered suffering from this illness. Extreme fatigue syndrome. And the university forced this man to take a forced leave. He took a week of vacation. Initially, he decided to take a week's vacation. But do you know how many days he eventually ended up with? Seven months. Instead of one week, he took seven month vacation. Instead of a se uh, one week's break, he took seven months vacation. He high be. As he spent the rest of the days beside the sea. Sea. As he swam, swim, read books, hear music, listen to music, and not do anything for seven months. For seven consecutive months. Go one job recover again. After he was fully recovered, he returned back to his work. But his schedule one job change. But his schedule was forever changed. Dear church, let us not commit the same mistake. Not the physical body, second and huge. Our physical body truly needs rest. After working for six days, you should rest one day. Listen to this carefully. Not resting for six days and working only for one week. Lazy people in our midst, they Behave like that. For God does not approve of lazy people. We work diligently for six days a week. On the seventh day, we rest. What will we do when you rest? We'll do these three things. Three hours. Three hours. Number one. First, rest my body. That our physical body will be rested. No more work. Number two. Secondly, we focus my spirit. 重新强调焦点。重力重新塑造你个，所以 Sabbath day is worship God, the day of the worship. The day of rest should be the day of our worship. 我哋重新 refocus our spirit in God. As we refocus our spirit in God, recharge our emotion. And thirdly, we recharge our emotion. 这是你休息应该创造代志。It's the thing that we need to do when we're at rest. 唔是规日困。And not find yourself sleeping that whole day through. This is bang zani because we charge the body, body, the soul, and the spirit. And we, to help us recharge our body, our soul, and our spirit. This guy here, the, yao kiu mok su Monday kabi gong wei. One time, a brother insisted or requested appointment with a pastor on a Monday. Pastor gong sorry, a Monday ngok ngok day off. Sorry. Pastor apologize. I'm sorry. I, uh, it's my day off. The brother replied and asked the pastor, Pastor, do you know that Satan does not rest? Yes, I know, I know. The pastor said, So why I'm not Satan, I'm not the devil. Ask yourself, are you devil? Devil will not rest. But we are not. We are creatures created by God. And recently, I just read through a book. And it talks about the reason why a dying person will regret in his life. There are five regrets. Number one, first, I will regret my People tend to regret that they find themselves spending more time at work. And they regret that they have spent so much time in their work. Because if you spend so much time at work, then you will have lesser time to be with your family. There are two choices. Which is more important? Your work is more important, or your relationship is more important. Is it more important to earn more money, or is it more important to improve the relationship with your wife and your children? This is your choice. And you make the choice. But make a right choice. But make the right choice. Number three. Thirdly, we need to take your shonde in chua. We need to go for to God for guidance. We got the. Let's read Psalm 23 verses 2 and 3. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his 
namesake. I mentioned a while ago that we face uh, a lot of stress or pressure. It's because we, we need to make a lot of decisions. It's very difficult to make uh, to, to decide. Because not all decisions you make will be perfect or correct. How should I decide? The best way is to seek God for His guidance. And may God be the first person and the only person to guide and lead us. God will never deceive you. God is our best counselor. He will forever show us His truth. Apostle Paul served in the church at Ephesus for three years. On his day of departure, he called all the elders and people farewell speech. to have a farewell speech. And he mentioned this statement. For I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. It's such a profound and great statement. We have lived our lives for the last 40 or 50 years of time. Or maybe 60 to 70 years of time. We all know that. Sometimes, we tend not to say the real thing. We only say the pleasant things. Or things that people like to listen. Because we dare not say words or things that might not offend others. La gao, la gao, la la, la gao zui lang. Because you want to be a better person. La 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 and you ended up not being more and more like God. No, 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 no. However, Apostle Paul said that there's not a single thing that I withhold from you if it's the will of God. If that's the way how the servant of God behaves, the kingdom of God should be so take you As we seek for God's guidance, we pray that God will show us what is correct and what is not. Every day when you wake up, open your Facebook. You should not be in a hurry to open your Facebook. news. Or you should not rush to watch the news. There's no not much good news in the world. focus on God. Let us refocus our attention to God. Open the Bible. As we open His Word. Open the Word of God. As we open the word of God, listen carefully to what God listen wants to tell to the you. Listen to the direction, the instruction of God. You'll find out that every day will be different if you begin the day in this way. When you make decision, every time you make a decision, God's word will come upon you. Will help you to make a right decision. Number four. Fourthly. We need to trust God in the dark valleys. Let's read verse 4 of Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In our life, you'll not find the smooth sailing all day through. Sooner or later, you'll find yourself going through the valley of shadow. You'll experience hardship. You'll face bitterness. You'll face hardship. You may even shed tears. But that's good. But that is good. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 said that there's a time for everything in God. A time to laugh. A time to cry. So that's the way with God's timing. Sometimes it's not bad for you to shed tears. Shedding tears to wash away the distraught and discomfort in your heart. This is good for the spirit, good for the soul. Good for your spirit and soul. When I was a child, the day when I'm spanked by my mother, that day when I cried. He, um, they are, they are, they are 
I will find myself sleeping soundly that evening. So I sang I mean, People who would not enjoy a good night's sleep, maybe ask your spouse to beat you up. That you may cry in If you will cry profusely, then you'll enjoy a good night's sleep. Whenever you cry, all the burdens, all the distraught and discomfort will be washed away. So that's good. Which is good. You get it. Remember that. It's not bad for you to cry. However, do not be in fear. Fear is never a good thing. Jesus reminded us that never fear but trust in me. Trust and fear shall never coexist together. If you are afraid, then you'll find your trust in me. If you have trust and faith, your fear will go away. Your choice. You have to make that choice. Will you choose fear? Or trust? Some people who study the Bible found out that the entire Bible do not be afraid. Fear not. Appeared 365 times. Very meaningful, isn't it? If we have 365 days each year, then God will remind you 365 times, fear not or do not be afraid. You may ask, how can I not be afraid if I face death or going through the valley of shadow of death? Read carefully. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You will be going through it. Walk through it. You will pass through it. And then it's only a shadow. And remember the word shadow. shadow. Pay attention to shadow. Look at this. Shadow. Shadow is always larger than the object itself. Shadow. If you look at the shadow, Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. it's so huge and so frightening. But, yeah. but in reality, it's such a small object. Oftentimes, we are fooled and deceived shadow by that the big shadow that surrounds us. Yeah. But in reality, our problem is much smaller. Do you know how to make the shadow go away? A person? If you find that the light source is behind you, then you shall see the shadow before you. If you face the light, then you'll not see the shadow. Whenever you face problems in your life, which direction should you face? Facing God? Do you face God? Facing the light? Facing light source, or you face darkness. So there's only one way for you to face your fears, which is to face God and walk in His light. Then you'll find that God will remove your shadows one by one. This is David's experience. It was David's experience in Psalm 142, verse three. When my spirit grows faint within me, it is you who watch over my way. Oh God, as I face difficulties and problems, you know the way I take. We need to hold on closely to God. When you find yourself nowhere to go, as you go through the shadow or the valley of shadow, hold the hand of God. Hold the hand of God. Allow Him to lead you out from this place. Just imagine that. Whenever you go to a place, first time to visit that place. During the time you have two choices. Number one, first, you uh, ask for a copy of the map of that location and then you can go by yourself or you look for your tour guide and let the tour guide lead you this person was so familiar with this place which 
choice will you make? If I'm the one, I will never consult my mouth because I do not know how to read the mouth. Really, I do not know how to read the mouth. I found myself in trouble when I was in the States consulting a mouth. So I look for a person. Where do you go? I will just follow you because he is so familiar. How about you? How about you? If you find yourself, do not, do, you do not know the direction in your life, will you consult a map? Or you consult the Lord of your life? Allow Him to lead you the right choice. and make the right choice. Number five, Fifthly, let us allow God to be our protector. Let's read verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Do you have enemies in your life? Anyone who is unhappy about you? You'll be surprised if there's none. Even Jesus had. Are you a better person than Jesus? Whenever two persons would live together, conflict tends to arise. Then you'll face problems, attacks and criticism. Sometimes it's out of jealousy. Other times out of one's pride. You're unhappy about the other person in the same way he is not pleased with you. As you face it, such a situation, what, you, what will you do? The world's solution has only one way. Get even. And that's to get even. Get even. What does it mean? And you will quote Jesus saying, a tooth for a tooth, an eye for an eye. To get even. To get even. It's not beneficial to you. If you look at me with a bad stare, I'll look back. That's the way how the world behaves. In today's world, people are getting less and less courteous. Sometimes it's because of the proximity or the familiarity. There's no space or distance between. It's easy for you to quarrel, especially among spouses. We're so near each other. We do not know how to respect each other. That's why the Chinese has this very appropriate saying, a good husband and wife, they will behave like good friends. Look at it. He's my friend. I'm his friend. And between the two of us, there's a distance. I will not behave carelessly. I dare not shout at this man. How about with my wife or with my spouse? That's the way how we talk. Because even if I scolded her, she will not run away from me. At night, every night, she will return back home. If I would shout at my friend, maybe next week he'll leave me. That's why to people dear, uh, dear to us, we should keep our distance. Similarly to our spouses, to our wife, to our husband or children, we need to maintain the distance. And we should not overstep our boundaries. Our problem is oftentimes we overstep our boundaries or limits. After the transform message, and after the series of messages in the transformation, now prepare an, another set of message. We shall follow this with another series of messages. A healthy boundary, healthy relationship. Healthy boundaries. Healthy relationships. Sometimes we we'll keep the distance. As we keep this healthy distance, so so you don't get even. I see boy Jose. You'll find yourself not having a better outcome if you attempt to get even. They say, "Gong, what's the plan? What's the plan? What?" King David provided us. Young day, ah, the God turned his head. You will go by the hand. My God, prepare a feast in front of my enemies. This is a Though it's a symbolic statement. Though it's a symbolic statement. 
I will entrust to you my enemies. Do not allow me to overcome my enemies. Not because I wanted to get even. Not because I wanted to get even at my enemy. I want my enemy to get even. What do you mean? I submit my enemies to your hand. David is this man. And King David truly behaved like that. David thought they thought David is King Saul. During that time. David's greatest enemy was King Saul. Is that John King Saul called the Jew alive? And indeed, he entrusted King Saul into the hands of the Lord. Because David, they just run by with him, John King Saul Paxi. There were at least two occasions David could have murdered or killed King Saul. He didn't do it. And yet he refused. Give me this, Lord. Give me this. He submitted his enemy to God. Give us the strength. May the Lord help us. Do not get even. Aside from getting even, there's another way better. Entrusted to Him. Let God handle him. And that way, you'll find that many of your stress will be diminished. In your mind, if you always think about getting even, throughout the day you wanted to repent. If it's not good to me, I will strike back. I will not believe if you will not. Have stress. You are more stressful in life. You are not sure. I will not believe that you are living a stress-free life. This is also a testimony. And this is a testimony of Jesus. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. You got to which way? Look at the last sentence. He only as he was cried. He did not open his mouth. Could you bang that? May the Lord help us. The last. Finally, God will lead me all my life. Nan, jin tam sim, nan jin stressful, nan jin pressure, because we fear of the future. Many times we are so stressful. It's because we fear the future. But there is only a way to resolve this. In verse six, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You just now, some some get this thing. Oftentimes, we add another thing. Man, it. In case. Or what if? Or what if? In case. In case of. Man, it. What if? Then, 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 the devil should pay pay a thing to happen. We tend to think about think about the bad outcome. I don't know why you tend to think negatively. You don't want to think positive. You tend to veer towards the negative. Let the change in the mindset. We need to change our mindset. In case. But it. Hmm. I'm going to talk now. Oh. What will you do? What will you do? So I'm going to talk now. Talk now. Talk now. You'll find your stress level increasing. But David can't submit. However, how did King David? All the days of my life, goodness and love. Look at the verse one, boy. If you look back to verse one of Psalm twenty-three, the Lord is my shepherd. Yahuwah is the guide, boy. So I am the sheep. He is my shepherd. So yeah, David said, "I am the sheep." He is my shepherd. So yeah, David said, "I am the sheep." He is my shepherd. So yeah, David said, "I am the sheep." He is my shepherd. So yeah, David said, "I am the sheep." He is my shepherd. So yeah, David said, "I am the sheep." He is my shepherd. So yeah, David said, "I am the sheep." He is my shepherd. So yeah, David said, "I am the sheep." He is my shepherd. So yeah, David said, "I am the sheep." He is my shepherd. So yeah, David said, "I am the sheep." He is my shepherd. So yeah, David He will watch over me throughout my life. You know, shepherd. Usually, we'll have two dogs to assist the shepherd in watching over the flock. And some people give names to these two dogs. One is goodness. The other one is love. Two dogs protecting you. This is called unhui. This is called love. Goodness and love. It's something that you have. And throughout your life, accompanying you. Just to go to the Lord's house. Leading you to the house of God. What are you afraid of? You have a very important thing. If you pay attention to this. From verse two, beginning in verse two. I say, no different location. You'll find the different locations. No different location. Different places. Green pastures, quiet waters, path of righteousness, valley of the shadow of death, in the presence of my enemies, in the house of the Lord. There are so many stations that you will travel through in your life. Some of them are good, others are bad. Some are joyful, some are sad. But 
However, God will never leave you. Throughout your life, He holds and on to your hand. And then the destination, the song they sing, and your final destination is in the house of the Lord. What are you afraid of? Many of us we love to watch the serial series of the TV or movies. Or the uh, this. Okay. Even I, I watch those so, series. So this is not a okay? And it's not a sin to watch. If you get blinded because you watch from morning till night okay. and from night to the morning, then you're sinning. Control your time, okay? okay. Control your time, then you will be okay. The way how I would go through this serial uh, movie or series is different way. If there are 40 different discs in this series, I'll first look at the first two, but, and then I'll watch the last two. Praise God. And I'll praise God. That the hero in the end. So then I'm be, I'll be comforted. Even if the main character, the hero of the story, was beaten, I even in the ICU, I know that he will survive. Korean movie series always find the love lovers, uh, you know, having some problems. Then I will reassuredly tell them cancer hokey. The cancer will be cured. And in the end, the couple will be married and live life happily ever after. Every time I watch the series in this manner, then I will not be stressed. I'll be very relaxed. Even if the situation is so bad, I know that they will recover. Even if I'm not been through the different uh, but, this, but, but I, I know, know the, 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 the ending, the ending. I know uh. how it will end. It's the hero will survive. Surprisingly, don't laugh at me. That's the way with our life. Every time you face many things in your life, many problems that you encounter, we're so afraid. God says, what are you afraid of? I know your ending. Only you do not know. You're trusting God. If you trust in God, He's your shepherd. if He is your shepherd, and David said that surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. What are you afraid of? Many times you have a lot of fears because we do not know how our life will end. If only you know, then you will have faith. However, you cannot see faith. By faith, you will see God. May the Lord help us. Here's the question. Is the Lord Jehovah your shepherd. Let us ask the Lord Jehovah to be shepherd for our life. May the Lord help us. Next week, next week, we'll talk about mental health. We'll talk about mental health. This week, in your life group, in your life groups, we'll talk about six principles of physical health. We'll be discussing six principles of physical health. Let's discuss properly. And then make your goal. And then list down your goals. Remember, nothing will happen. Nothing will happen unless you list down specifically your goals. And then pursue your goal. And pursue your goals. May the Lord help us. Bow for the prayer. Let's bow down our heads for prayer. Eternal God, our heavenly Father, we praise and thank you. Not only are you our Savior, you're also our Shepherd. And many times in our life. We behave as if you are not beside us, as if we do not have any way to go. In our fear, in our trouble, in our distrust, we tend to end things doing our way. Forgive our sins. Bring us back to your shepherd, to your fold, to your guidance, and allow us to trust you fully throughout the days of our life that we may experience your goodness and your love forever. Amen. We pray this in the mighty name of our shepherd, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.